What does Foxtel have to offer Australia in Ultra HD? And can the new IQ4 set-top box make up for the shaky IQ3? Vertical Hold, Behind the Tech News, is proudly brought to you by Belkin. Welcome to Vertical Hold, Behind the Tech News where we talk to Australia's leading technology journalists to get the stories behind the news of the week. I'm Adam Turner, and I'm joined as always by a man with a great face for podcasting, Alex Kidman, to channel surf through the headlines in search of the big picture. It's a big week in entertainment news, so once again we're welcoming Decider.tv media commentator Steve Malk to the show. Steve, welcome back. Hello gentlemen, the intros have gotten brutal on Alex, haven't they? (laughs) They really have. I'm crying on the inside. We're looking at a raft of announcements from pay TV giant Foxtel this week as it unveils 4K, releases a new set-top box, and ditches HFC cable in favour of satellite. But first, over to the news desk. Alex, what's happening in tech? NBN Co has backflipped on a plan that would have seen country users on fixed wireless NBN plans pay $20 more for 5020 plans than those on the exact same connections in metro areas would have done. ACCC data suggests that 9 out of 10 rural fixed wireless users would have had to cop the excess charge if they wanted the highest speed fixed wireless plans, but NBN Co now claims that it won't happen and that it was just a consultation issue. Telstra has officially switched on its 5G mobile service on the Gold Coast, but it's not yet open for business. The 5G network will let the telco test pre-commercial 5G devices in real-world conditions and 200 5G-capable sites are set to go live around the country by the end of the year. Now, the first 5G devices for customers won't hit the market until next year. They'll be 5G-capable hotspots, and the first 5G-capable handsets might not even arrive in Australia until the year after. The federal government has revealed the draft of its new encryption laws, which would require designated communication providers to provide access to encrypted communications on their networks, either by decrypting them or making decryption routes available when products are built. It's wide-ranging legislation that would technically require any internet communications provider with at least one Australian user to comply. Amazon is ramping up its Australian retail operations, adding another fulfilment centre in Sydney. Located in the southwest suburb of Moorbank, the new centre is nearly double the size of its Melbourne counterpart. This move will allow Amazon to sell a greater range of products in Australia, as well as speed up delivery times as part of its local $59 per year Amazon Prime service. So Alex, we're finally seeing a draft of these encryption laws that supposedly Offer a backdoor, but don't offer a backdoor. What are we talking about here? So we're talking about Australian government control of encrypted communications under the the kind of attention-grabbing headlines of keeping us safe and secure from terrorists and being able to track criminal activities of pedophiles and the like. And these are not bad things in and of themselves. It's always very difficult to argue against these proposals because people will come out and say, oh, but then the terrorists win, or oh, are you pro-pedophile? No. No, definitely not. But that being said, I don't think this is great legislation and I think it's problematic on so many levels. Um, First of all, just from the very basic privacy level, I do believe that people have a right to privacy and encryption is a great way to ensure that. Uh, Also, simply because there just seem to be so many logical holes in the way they seem to want to implement this. As As I said in the news piece, if you've got one Australian user, technically you've got to comply with this law. Well, if I'm building some new great, you know, Facebook killer in in the Ukraine and the Australian government comes knocking and saying, we want you to build us an encryption backdoor, how are they going to compel me? I don't see that happening. But fundamentally, there's also just a straight up trust issue and Australian government control of its data and making sure that stuff that should be sensitive and private has a terrible, terrible history and saying, hey, we'll let you into the stuff that you're encrypting. It just seems like a massively backward step to me. So, Steve, what have you got to hide? Not a thing. I'm, mate, you, anybody that follows me on social media is that I have very little to hide. That's probably a bad thing. He hangs it all out there. Oh, more than we probably need to know. Uh, the, ca- the catch, of course, for this is, It's really a trust issue for the government when it comes to this kind of legislation. And let's have a look at their track record when it comes to anything around technology. It's shithouse. 
technical term, but yes, I think that is a fair appraisal of what it's been like in the last couple of years. Now, Alex, I noticed that they specifically said that they're not asking for back doors. So they're not asking for, for a way to sneak in that someone else might be able to exploit. So instead of that, what is it that they're asking for? Well, they're not asking for a backdoor, except they are asking for a backdoor. Exactly, there's different, yeah. There's different levels to the way that they can request this, and they have said that it has to be warranted and it has to be somewhat public. But, you know, I mean, as Steve was just saying, there's a, there's a, there's a huge trust issue here, and there is an issue with creating this kind of methodology for the government to decrypt private communications because you've got to be able to ensure that they, that stays in government hands. There have been numerous instances where large-scale cyber attacks have actually happened yeah. because the exact tools that the intelligence community has, has had have leaked out to other people and they've used them to stage those kind of attacks. It's there's just I mean there are problems all over this all over the place and I just I, I don't see this as good legislation. I don't see this as a good step towards a more open society. I see it as you know the surveillance state being brought. Full hilt, and I'm not surprised in the current environment. Um, I'm sure there's probably votes in it, but I think it's it's a terrible piece of legislation. <laughs> I've made my 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 position clear. Does yeah, Adam? Do you think that there's some merit to, to this? I think it's very complicated, and I think the problem is that, as you say, it's very difficult to have an even-handed conversation about it. But as soon as you open the door for somebody, you've left the door open technically for everybody. Yep. And and it, even from a consumer level, it gets people starting to ask questions about, you know, if I have an iPhone, we know that that whole environment is encrypted. And if, you know, uh, the police need access to my iPhone because they believe I've done something untoward or planned something on it, does this legislation, assuming it gets through, allow or f force Apple to reveal the contents of my iPhone to, you know, the police, the 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 people that want to know things. Well, given Apple stared down the US government on that exact kind of issue, you've got to think that, well, uh, yeah, they'll probably just flick uh, Australia the middle finger. It is the worst because we have people who aren't asking the right questions and don't even have the right basic understandings getting involved in writing and pitching this legislation. So, Adam, Foxtel's on the offensive with brand new channels and brand new definition and a brand new business model. But what's the story here? Well, in a nutshell, Foxtel's talking about Ultra HD. About half the country now apparently has Ultra HD screens in the lounge room. Foxtel's decided now's the time to get in. Steve, you've been following this for a while. Is this worth getting excited about? What will we actually get from Foxtel? There's always potential. And Foxtel are an organization that have tried and to their credit sometimes failed, sometimes succeeded when they've wanted to push the technical envelope uh, or give us content that is new or different or, or even just better definition. So I think there's great potential. We're going to see the uh, 4K UHD service launch in October with a dedicated channel, channel 444, funnily enough. Uh, and then I think it's November in time for the cricket. They'll launch uh, a dedicated sports channel in 4K alongside their already HD and SD services. <sighs> I'm just a bit skeptical when it comes to the hardware. Yeah, okay. So what do I need as an end customer to watch this Ultra HD content? Funnily enough, a whole new box. The IQ4 has been launched. Uh, no word yet on what that's going to cost us, I think. They're talking some numbers, but nothing serious. At they're the throwing around, I think it was about $125. So then they're not looking at slogan people with, you know, several hundred dollars. I think they realize that they're sort of past the days of screwing existing customers that hard. Yeah, they're, they're trying hard, and that's not a bad thing. Of course, uh, if you think that you'll be able to get it on your HFC service, bam, bam. Uh, <laughs> recently, Foxtel said that they are getting out of the HFC business and totally going. Uh, down a satellite service. Now, I've done a little bit of reading on this. It's totally possible on the satellite services that they've got and the dishes that we have on our roofs, uh, all it's going to mean is a little bit extra hardware spec in the IQ4 uh, and a dedicated two tuners to be able to deal with that. Yeah. And in Fox so you don't defense... So you don't need a satellite dish then? Surely no, you, you... Right. you do need a satellite yeah, dish. That's part of the process. 
Fox in Foxtel's defense, it's not their fault that they're getting off the cable though. Um, no, that's right. The cable's it's, it's... getting rolled into the MBN at the moment. Foxtel leases capacity from well, traditionally Foxtel leased capacity from Telstra on the Telstra cable network. Then when the MBN took over, Telstra's been leasing that from the MBN and then subleasing it to Foxtel. So that agreement expires in 2023. So by 2023, mm. Foxtel can't be serving any customers over cable anymore. So in the last few years, it's been moving more customers over to satellite, prioritizing satellite for new installation, and it already has more than half the customers already on satellite. They haven't made any noise yet as to whether or not the 4K service will be available via Foxtel now. I assume that it would, given that it's you, know, you only need 25 meg dedicated to make that work. And if you're lucky enough to have a reasonable incarnation of the NBN, you should be able to handle that. Certainly, it's prioritized for satellite. The The disappointing part for me is that all the IQ4 is, is the IQ3 on steroids. And how great did the IQ3 rollout go? <laughs> it was a flaky piece of junk because they rushed it out to compete with Netflix. And when we said to them, are you rushing this out to compete with Netflix? They're like, no. Yeah. And yes, they were. It took them a long time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Took them a long time. I'm starting to regret that I'm green curry for dinner. (laughs) Took them a long time to work out the bugs in the IQ3. And one of the problems I found with it early on was the Bluetooth remote control. A lot of the the fact that the box was not responsive was because I got a lot of electronic crap in my land room, as a lot of people do, Mm. and Bluetooth just wasn't up to it. And when I pulled out an old infrared remote, the box was much better. Because they, even though it's a Bluetooth remote, they still left an infrared port in it. Now, they've yes. done the same thing with the IQ4, thankfully. It comes yeah, with a so- Bluetooth remote, but there's still an infrared port in there. So if you've got an old Foxtel, like a, a remote from your IQ2, or if you've got a universal remote like a Logitech that you can program, you can still use that to drive the IQ4, thankfully. That some of the challenge, and, and look, I acknowledge you're right, it was a bit flaky when they rolled it out. They have improved the CPU in the IQ4. There's uh, 50% more RAM in it, uh, and they've doubled the flash memory. However, the stuff that people are really going to care about from a, a consumer practical point of view, it still has the same one terabyte d- drive in it, which for SD or HD recordings, you know, is pretty okay. If you get serious about recording 4K content, that is going to get eaten alive. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that changes over the next few years as they roll out more boxes. The, the interesting thing is that there are Foxtel customers out there who already have an IQ4, they just don't know it. Because when you read mm-hmm. the fine print, they've actually been sh- the IQ3s they've been shipping for the last six months or so are actually IQ4 is just running IQ3 firmware. So some people out there, it won't cost them anything to upgrade to this box. But if you're a cable customer and you want to get onto Ultra HD, you need to get an IQ4, but you need to get a satellite IQ4, not a cable IQ4. So they'll have to come out to your roof, to your house, put a satellite dish on the roof, which might cost you 100 bucks unless they feel like doing you a deal. And then you can't keep your old IQ3 because it will be a cable box and the IQ4 has to be a satellite box because I'll only get it through satellite. But when there's only one, you're talking about Ultra HD channels, I think there's still only going to be one channel at launch, even when they... When they start showing sport in November, at first, I think their Ultra HD channel is going to be a bit of everything. So there'll be some movies, some drama, but then when the cricket's on, they'll switch across to that. So at, in the beginning, there's not actually that much Ultra HD content you're going to record. But a couple of years down the track, yeah. when we've got multiple Ultra HD channels and they're, uh, they're already talking about doing the AFL I assume they won't be able to do every match straight away because they've just got to have the cameras and stuff. That's one of the big um, things that's holding them back. But once you've got that, then, yeah, that one would say one terabyte's not going to look as attractive as it did. So they're going to have to start to ramp that up, I think. They are making noises that the entire NRL season next year will be in 4K. That's well, a big just, commitment. Can I just burst in here and say that, and this is going to surprise the heck out of Adam, I think sport makes an awful lot of sense for 4K. <laughs> okay. Yep. Who are you and what have you done with Alex? <laughs> All right. I think Alex has been hacked. Some, there's some <laughs> encryption backdoor here. I'm really concerned. You know, we're talking about that round thing that you throw around, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm, I'm familiar with, with your sporting terminology. You're not going to fool me with jargon, sir. No, but having the thing is, Foxtel broadly has always followed what News Corp has done with Sky in the UK. Yeah. 
and they've had 4K there for a while, and it's only been on a couple of channels, and it's mostly been either movies or sport. And movies, obviously, the source material is there. That's actually not difficult, apart from the transmission mechanism, of course. But sport is where I think it does make more sense Partially because that increased resolution is obviously just going to make it easier to, you know, see the small ball flying around the screen no matter what sport it is that you like. And this will depend on what they can broadcast, obviously. But also because it strikes me that it's the thing that Foxtel's got left. Not that it's not producing its own drama, not that it doesn't do other production or provide other entertainment services, but in terms of unique selling points. Yeah. Netflix and and Stan... Yeah. do not have live sport. Amazon Prime Videos kind of played with it because they had the the NFL Thursday night games, I think it was last year, but they could only show those live. Foxtel has much wider rights to that. That plus 4K, I think, is not a terrible business plan for them. That's a big investment in cameras, though. I mean, they don't own the cameras. They get them through a partner, but to have that amount of gear because you're going to have several matches on at once... That will be a big step up. And then to try and do the same thing with the AFL and the NRL at the same time, I would think it would be a while before they can do every match every week. I wouldn't be surprised if to begin with it's, you know, the match of the round is in Ultra HD. We'll see how it goes from there. But also they'll need multiple channels at that point too. So that's that's really going to push it to the test. Um, Steve, could you see this is really a big differentiator here compared to free-to-air television? I mean, with Foxtel straight away, you've got every AFL match of the round. With free-to-air television, you've got maybe half of them. But Ultra HD's just sort of really hammers home that advantage. Do you reckon, can free-to-air follow with this? Look, it's a tough one because it's all bandwidth and they'll all continue to cry about how they don't have enough bandwidth even though they're now not paying for it. I was going to say, yeah, give us more free spectrum, sir. Yeah, Uh, It's it's a bit on the nose in that regard. Uh, Look, I, I think that this is certainly going to make the free-to-air, particularly commercial networks, sit up and take notice. However, the catch is exactly that. You've got to have the content flow through to make it worthwhile. I would also just quietly challenge the assertion that 50% of households in Australia have UHD or 4K TVs. I thought that number was a bit high, actually. That's the number that Foxtel was throwing around. I thought it sounded a bit high. Maybe 50% of Foxtel subscribers. Maybe that's it, yeah. Um, Um, I'm also left wondering... Uh, speaking of percentages of Foxhole subscribers, how many Foxhole subscribers are going to be effectively forced to drop their subscription because they live in an apartment block where you can't necessarily very easily say, oh, I'll just go and throw a satellite dish up on the roof. They're going to have to... F- I was thinking... I was wondering about that. I should have asked them. I was talking to them yesterday. I should have asked them about that. Dish on they the balcony, must have baby. A- yeah, they must, they must have a plan for that. They've got a couple of years to make it work. They must have a plan for that, particularly because they're... The increase of medium density housing in Australia's major capital cities to cut off everyone in an apartment block is just insane. So I would figure out they must have a way around that. Mate, watch, you know who will just jump on it straight away is all of the pubs and clubs and those sorts of places. Yeah. Um, We also should point out that. But they don't care about picture quality. When was the last time you watched television in a pub? God, it's the wrong aspect ratio. It's everything (laughs) is wrong. They, They just want to throw a beer sometimes at the TVs I see in a pub. At the same yes. time, Adam, I could totally see a pub saying, we've got the AFL yes. in 4K. Yeah, like, it might be on a really screen, it might be in the, the wrong aspect ratio, but, <laughs> but just you, you stick a sign out the, the front colors are and you'll inverted sell 10% and the more beer. screen's upside down, but it is ultra HD. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Stick it on a billboard out the front, it would look good. It's a chance for sports-loving nerds anywhere to get a free beer by going into that place, offering to fix the aspect ratio and everything else. Uh, just so that we can enjoy sports ball in uh, the appropriate fashion. Um, people who have premium Foxtel sports Foxtel packages uh, will get to see this new channel pop up in their feeds. It's not for everybody. Um, but they're not I charging am... extra on top for Ultra HD, though, are they? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I-, I suspect it may become a thing if they can get the volume of content to support it. Uh, it's Sport is the great play on this. It's the thing that is really keeping Foxtel alive. So it makes the most sense for them to invest in getting their sport to 4K as quickly as possible. Keep an eye out for all of those Foxtel booths in the middle of your shopping malls. They will have 4K screens in them as quick as anything. Yeah. And a hard um, drive out the back to run the content. One hundred percent. Have a satellite yes. dish on top of yeah. the on top of the shopping center. Yeah. But same. It's it's just the experience, right? It shows you what it will look like. Yeah. This is true. This is true. 
And speaking of the experience, actually, you, you mentioned Foxtel now, and they've made, I know, vague noises that, I oh, will do 4K there eventually, and obviously the, the existing Foxtel Now box is technically 4K capable, albeit mm. a little slow. As is but, the Telstra so, TV too, as well, which does fucked up. That is true. That is true. I had forgotten about that. Thanks. Uh, but there's also this this ongoing uh, story, which I think the AFR s- started up, that they're looking to split out Foxtel now into, in fact, dedicated sports and then entertainment packages as they kind of take the fight to Netflix. Steve, do you reckon that's a, a strategy that could work for them? Look, Foxtel are behind the eight ball in regards to how they sell Foxtel now. There's so, still such a large uh, segment of the market that don't know that Foxtel is available like that without contract and those sorts of things, in spite of the effort that they've gone to to advertise about it, uh, to make it so that someone can walk up. Uh, and, and I know they already do this for Game of Thrones explicitly, but to be able to say, I just want your premium drama package and just give me this and not all of those other things. I just want this bit, uh, is the great bane of consumers, you know, independent of how great the entertainment packages are where you get five or six or eight channels. Not everybody watches all of them, but there's a lot of great stuff across it. But I only want to watch Game of Thrones. I only want to watch, you know, whatever the thing is. The uh, I can't even remember what the other big thing on HBO is at the moment. Westworld. Westworld Thank pretty you. good. That's, yeah, that does all right. But yeah. again, both of them not in 4K. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I don't think that HBO is shooting stuff in 4K, they're, which not is yet. interesting because they're putting stuff out on disc in 4K, like they're up resing it, oh. but they're not shooting in 4K. But Foxtel told me that they will do their best to source 4K content wherever they... If for, a 4K version of something is available somewhere, they will attempt to source that. So they really want to push Ultra HD as their differentiator. The thing that will kill this for Foxtel, and I saw this in an article somewhere, allegedly a quote from Delaney or whoever, suggesting that they there will be some content that is upscaled yeah. and broadcast on that. And I, no way. I mean, honestly, if anyone has seen anything upscaled, it never works well. Yeah, I wouldn't be going there. I'd be, there's enough premium content around that you shouldn't need to do that, especially if you're only trying to fill one channel. But, I mean, th- at least they won't go down the path of the free-to-air networks of, hey, let's put repeats of I Dream of Genie on our high-def channel <laughs> just because, you know, we don't want to fragment our audience. So that they should do something decent with it. Um, w- another question, though, we're going back to talking about satellite and getting dishes on your roof and stuff like that. Foxtel have been pushing pretty hard recently how satellite is so reliable and more reliable than cable. But that kind of clashes with the stories that I hear from people sometimes. What are your thoughts on that? It, it really can be hit and miss sometimes, can't it? Yeah. I'm really lucky where I am. Uh, the satellite dish on the top of our house has just uninterrupted everything. It can see all of the sky. Uh, so there's no problem there. But I've got a friend one suburb over that it gets patchy sometimes even just depending on the weather. Yeah, now the weather, I think rain shear or whatever, there's a technical term for something to do with the rain that can really stuff up satellite, not just pay TV, but, you know, Skymaster and all kinds of satellite is vulnerable to particular weather patterns. Um, I will, it'll be interesting to see how much they try and sweep that under the carpet because there's nothing they can do about it. It's not like you can lay new... Um, pipes or whatever you're stuck with what you've got you know mate if if uh foxtel and their parent company could control the weather then the daily telegraph would be the most popular paper in australia by a long shot i'm sure rupert's working on it (laughs) so they were talking about as you say foxtel now they were talking about streaming these channels in 4k eventually just not yet. yes and their, their argument is which whether or not it's true it certainly holds water that the australia's broadband is just not up to it if people want 4k and they want it reliably we can't guarantee every customer that we can deliver them 4k via the internet but it sounds like they will definitely look to that down the track and the iq4 is an ultra hd capable streaming box so i'm wondering if there will come a point in the next, because one of the frustrations with Foxtel now is it's just a live streaming service. You can't record it. You can't use an IQ4 with it. But really, in theory, when you think about it, that's only a firmware change. There shouldn't be anything stopping me subscribing to Foxtel over the internet and them sending me an IQ4 box, which will treat those IPTV streaming channels just like normal channels, because that's exactly what a Fetch TV does with its streaming channels. You can record, you can pause, you can rewind. Those channels are just like, you know, real channels. 
I don't see why they couldn't start selling an IQ4 so I can pay for a full Foxcell service and get the full service but streaming over the internet. I can record, I can create series passes, all that kind of stuff. Do you think that there's demand out there for that over the internet? There's demand for that right here. I would take that in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I'm one of the lucky ones where my, uh, admittedly to the node NBN, uh, is across the street. So I get reliably 92 meg down. You can see uh, the node. There are a lot of envious people out there. If you could hit the node with a Coke can, you're doing pretty well. I'm looking out my window at it right now. Uh, so to that Blowing end, I kisses will- to it. Anything, oh, mate, it's getting a Christmas present. Uh, anything that I can get across that precious little bit of copper across the road, I will take. Um, I'm sure I've got to sail it on my roof, but that's a hangover from, as far as I'm concerned, an old technology. Everything that I do exists in the internet space. So why not provide that opportunity? Because exactly that, we've got a Fetch Mighty in our lounge room and it records all sorts of things. It is the best way that I have to watch ridiculousness and I would die without it. Although, to be fair to Foxtel now, yeah, they don't do recording, but they do do an awful lot of on-demand stuff. Like uh, a lot, not all, admittedly, but a lot of what is on their live channels ends up on on-demand relatively sure. quickly. And yeah. then you don't need and to kind of pretty good fuss picture and quality too. Yeah. The frustration for that, though, is that it's, it's you know, reasonably quickly. Like the best one for sure. me, I, I watched last week tonight, all the time and it's never like you know there we go 8 30 at broadcast 9 30 it's done it's never usually available on catch up until midnight to allow for our west australian friends to watch it live why not just bang it on the catch up because whether i watch it live or i watch it via catch up is still a view and in fact you get to count it independently of how that works so just give it to me in the way i want to see it when i want to be able to see it so uh forgive me i've never used an iq3 and obviously I haven't used an IQ4, but uh, you were talking about streaming services. Uh, I know with the Foxtel Now box, it's great for most services, but they haven't come to a deal with Netflix. Is it the same story with the IQ3, and will it be the same story as the IQ4? Because let's face it, that is, Netflix is still the you know the popular gold standard for streaming services. No, I couldn't see them ever putting Netflix on an IQ box. Steve, what do you think? Yeah, look, that's Foxtel's baby. Uh, so as far as the IQ goes, all we will ever see there is Foxtel content or the terrestrial broadcast channels like 7, 9 and 10 that they pick up via other methods. In the same way, we won't see Stan. In the same way, we won't see Amazon Prime. But, I mean, you, you, you can get Stan on a Foxtel Now box. They're not totally averse to this idea. And that feels like absolute head in the sand stuff because then you're saying to Australian households, oh, so you want, you want, you know, you want our service because of course you want our service because it's lovely. But, oh, uh, yeah, look, you want those other services? Oh, you'll have to get another streaming box. You'll have to get a smart TV and hope that the app keeps up with Netflix and with the other streaming services, which is just, I mean, it's just clunky. It is, but that's the reality. The IQ is the gold standard for Foxtel and how they own that environment. Sure, the Foxtel Now box has an allowance to put Stan and some other bits on there, and that's great. Uh, I think they see that as crashing. just a lesser player, right? Yeah, when it's not crashing. Yeah, that's just to tide you over. And that's what I'm saying. I wonder if they'd ever go the whole hog and let you buy an IQ4 to use like a Foxtel Now box. But at the moment, they don't want that Foxtel Now box to cannibalize their sales too much. And even I remember looking at the, the, the Foxtel Now box versus the Telstra TV box. The integration, I think, on the Foxtel Now box between Foxtel and everything else was appalling. It really was like there's Foxtel and then there's this other stuff over here and good luck finding it and getting it to work. Oh, look, the perfect solution for me, quite honestly, and I appreciate how impossible it might be, is to just allow me to sign in to my Foxtel Now subscription on my Fetch Mighty. Shut up and take my money. Yeah, 100%. Not going to happen. And look, I think this is the other great tragedy of it, because there's so many, and we've talked about some of these before, but there's so many great little streaming boxes out there in their own way, but there's no one really good solution that does all of them. I mean... The kind of the, what I would consider the best in market solutions, the the Nvidia Shield and the the Apple TV 4K, have gaps in their arsenal. The Foxtel now has gaps because it doesn't have Netflix. Yeah. The Telstra TV is so tightly controlled that it's painful to use. Vodafone is open but doesn't have. St- 
give me one box that will do it all and, and I'll never leave my living room. To we rule face them all. bigger problems, gentlemen, though, and that is that we have CBS All Access launching by the end of the year and we've got Disney streaming service coming to us in 12 months' time. That's two more players and who's going to let them on their boxes? Yeah, as if the market wasn't fragmented enough. We had this great moment in time where everything was sort of starting to unify and Netflix was kind of looking like that one place where you get everything you'd ever want for 10 or 15 bucks a month and then it all kind of just fragmented because everyone said you know netflix is too powerful i'm going to take that back and then australia said well let's have stan and let's have presto and it's just it's collapsing back to the way it was it's going back to the old pay tv model of oh well if you want to watch this you'll need to buy this package if you want to watch this you'll need to buy this package now if i've got to subscribe to 10 services at 10 or 15 bucks each shit, just give me premium fox sale and get out of my face and it's becoming more difficult because depending on when those services launch or how the deals are in place, as we've already seen with All Access, Star Trek Discovery is only on Netflix in Australia and won't be on All Access. Yes, uh, and it's staying to- that way. I asked them. Mm-hmm. CBS All Access can't take it. It's locked into Netflix for yeah, the entire all of those series. Deals, yeah. All of those deals are life for series. And so, because I'm a Star Wars nerd, I have to get the Disney streaming service because that's the only way I'm going to see the Star Wars live action series. They're holding a lightsaber up to your head. Although, if I'm either Disney or CBS, the the minimum I would do is release an Android TV client because then, in theory, you can be on the Shield TV, you can be on the Vodafone TV, and, you know, if the skies open and, and miracles start occurring, you might end up on the Foxtel Now box. You're at least sitting in those spaces, and I'd be utterly flabbergasted if Disney and CBS weren't already seriously talking to Apple about being on the Apple TV as well. To the same end, I'd be surprised if Fetch weren't talking to them both as well. But Fetch, Fetch, as much as I love their products and as much as they're a homegrown entity, Fetch is a very small player in this. I'm sure they're trying to have the conversation, but they're probably more in the supplicant position where everyone else can negotiate terms. Sure, but all Fetch do in that scenario is really just a launchpad app, right? All it does is open the window to the Netflix uh, part of the internet or the stand part of the internet. It becomes a great on-sell for Fetch in the home where I've got this one box that acts as my portal to the many things that I now subscribe to, to be able to see them and use them. I still can't record Stan or Netflix, but I still use my fetch for all of that. Well, that just about wraps up another episode of Vertical Hold. Thanks to Steve for joining us for the show. It's my pleasure, gents. And as always, we love to get your feedback, so feel free to comment via Twitter or the Vertical Hold Facebook page. Thanks everyone for listening. And remember, if you like what you hear, Hit that subscribe button. And if you've subscribed, leave us a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your great podcasts. Vertical Hold, Behind the Tech News, is proudly brought to you by Belkin. (coughs) Sorry, I had a bit of a brutal curry for dinner. I think I'm going to regret it in about 10 minutes. (sighs) What does Foxtel have to offer us?